Hello fellow Newtopians. Today I would like to have a one-sided discussion with you about the the current equation uh, involving the sphinx sphere. It's an alchemical expression that looks something like this. Uh, there's three spheres involved. The inner sphere made of silver or plated in silver and alchemically symbolized as this half moon. I've colored it pink. <laughs> the outer sphere is plated in gold and alchemically symboled as the circle with a point. The central sphere alchemically symboled as platinum with the combination of the two. In an androgynous uh, design. And then there's a conduit that runs through the Sphinx sphere and it's plated in bismuth which is alchemically represented with this infinity symbol and here I have labeled also the whole equation as a solar system event or heavenly event by naming each precious metal with its celestial counterpart. Uh, Venus on the inside, Mars on the outside, and basically what I've denoted here is a duality here, a, a conjunction, a, a conjoined uh, oneness of Venus and Mars alchemically already displayed that way for uh, centuries, I guess. Okay, now to me, that seems pretty hermaphroditic with both sexes in one, which is where we're all trying to transcend to that point. But to me, in my mind, my simple mind, my truck driver mind, uh, that can only happen in heaven, okay? So, I, I, uh, I love the concept, but I think it needs to be tweaked. So that's what I'm doing. I'm basically taking all the components of, of the equation, leaving the components alone, but I'm just flip-flopping. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put the symbol for bismuth with the eternity symbol, which represents Earth, in the middle. Okay? And I'll show you that later. Before I get to my new equation, I want to, I want to ground your minds in the, in, in the concept that we're still on Earth. Okay? And, and on Earth, uh, there are dualities that just do not uh, get along, such as in a simple bar magnet. Okay, you have a north and you have a south in your bar magnet. And I'll represent those with, as male and female. And never the twain shall meet, okay? They're always going to be butting heads or pulling away from each other. They don't want anything to do with each other, okay? That's third dimension. That's where we are, okay? So, to get back to the alchem alchemical phraseology, as above, so must below, I'd like to draw you your attention to my new equation that's just been in my mind optimized. Uh, same three planets yet um, the pair bond is on the other side of the equal sign, on the other side of the equation. And I, I mean I think it's kinda I mean I, I don't know how to explain it any better than uh, drawing your attention to the schematic. Okay, what we have here is the outer sphere plated in gold, inner sphere plated in silver, but now I'd like to, in my new schematic, replace the central sphere with a plating of bismuth. And the reason I'd like to do that is because of this uh, this openness, this hole 
in the alchemical symbol. The the ancient alchemists when they when they drew this symbol, I think they left a hole in it on purpose. This, that's the secret. That's the key. Okay. I want I, I I would like to consider that hole as paramount, the most important aspect of this new equation. Okay. So one day Mars says to Venus, "Hey, baby." I'd like to meet you on Earth and we can party on Earth. And Venus, she says, Okay, I'll meet you on Earth. That sounds good. So she comes to Earth and she meets Mars on Earth. And they're partying. They're having a good time for what seems like an eternity. Right? They just go round and round, round and round. Sun goes up, moon comes down. Day after day. But they never become one. They never become one, because they're still in the third dimension. Until one day, they are instigated. They are, oh man, I don't know, energized. They're motivated somehow. And I'll call it shock therapy in this case, because, because it's a sphinx sphere, and we're going to be introducing some energy, some electricity. And so, at that point, we begin to seed, they begin to breed, and they become one, they, they become hermaphroditic, they, and they hold hands. I don't know. The, the male and the female get together, and they meet up, basically, at the train station, which is platinum. Right here. They get, they get to the platform, the train platform, and they jump through the door. This is the entryway to the fourth dimension. Okay, this is this is how you transcend. Okay, once you get to the point where you're about to co-inhabit the same body with both sexes, that's the doorway into the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is a doorway itself that just leads you to the fifth dimension. Whatever that is. I don't know. I'm not entirely interested with the fifth dimension. And I'll tell you why. All my motivation at this point is, is to get my pair bond up the conduit and over to my 350 General Motors V8 engine that I have in my Chevrolet pickup truck. Okay? That's all I want. That's all I want to do. So, that being said, I hope I didn't step on anybody's toes, but uh, it's a brainstorming activity that I'm just, you know, practicing with you guys. And uh, this might get your own creative juices flowing, and maybe somewhere somebody along the line will do something fantastic and great with it. Uh, so, that being said, just to reculminate, we're in the third dimension, where, where we are unable to pair bond. Pair bonding only happens in heaven, or the fifth dimension, or the doorway, the fourth dimension for, uh, doorway. Okay? I don't see that happening here on Earth. So, we have to take that pair bond out of the equation on, on one side of the, on one side of the equation, on the equal, and, and put it over on the other side, because that's where we want. That's what we want to get to, the, the pair bond, the conjoining, the hermaphroditic episode. <laughs> that's what we want. We want, that's heaven. That is heaven. Oneness, okay? There's no oneness on the third dimension. Only in the fourth dimension will we achieve oneness, okay? All right, that being said, uh, thanks for listening. Catch you later.